Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our lesson number 67. Today is our day number 67. Let's see what we have for today. Today we only have about five words, that's it. The very first word that we want to learn today is acclimate. 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 It's a word. What does it mean to acclimate? To acclimate means to get used to, to get used to one's surrounding in the physical sense of the word you understand to get rid of one to get rid of one, you get to get used to one's surrounding as in uh, if you run the water in the bathtub and as you step in first in the bathtub uh, to take a bath you might feel that it's too hot but after about a minute or so your body gets used to the temperature right? your body has gotten acclimated your body has gotten used to that environment, to that temperature. And that's what it means in the physical sense of the word. To get used to one's surrounding, to get used to, to get used to one's atmosphere. To get re to get used to one's environment or situation. But as I said, it is in the physical sense of the word. It, it doesn't mean to get used to a new culture or a new society or, 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 or a new environment in that sense. If you, uh, if you move from here, uh, if I move from here where I am in Connecticut and move to live somewhere in, say, Beijing, I will have to get used to the new environment. But that, you will not use the word acclimated in that case. In that sense, where I'm getting trying to get used to the new environment in the sense of new culture and new language and new atmosphere, in that sense, the word that we use in that in that context is assimilate. Which is also a word. To assimilate means to get used to, to get used to new culture. To get used to new language maybe. To learn a new language when you move there to new new society. Uh, to get used to new society or to get used to new mores. We'll talk about the word mores in a second. But this is more of an intellectual exercise. Assimilation is more of an intellectual exercise. You're getting used to, well, not in the physical sense of the environment, but rather in the intellectual sense because you want to so you want to, you want to be accepted by this new society. So you learn a new language, you learn a new, new way of life, you learn their value system, you learn their culture, and that's called assimilation, which is not to be confused with acclimation, which is physically in the physical sense of the word. I want to get you. I want to get acclimated. When we go outside, uh, when you leave your house and go outside in the in the in the very uh, very cold morning, all well, your body gets a little time to get used to the big difference in temperatures you leave the house and go out in the cold that's called acclimation assimilation is in the intellectual sense of the word intellectually you're getting used to the new environment learning a new language learning new new customs new ways of doing things new mores what are mores mores are exactly what we just said these are these are value systems these are these are mores are uh, values uh, what I'm looking for ways of doing things 
Mores, uh, mores is the word that we learn on day number 45. If you want to learn, if you want to learn the word in more detail, just type in vocabulary words, day number 45, and you will learn word mores as in as in value system, as in uh, different societies has different way, uh, different uh, different value system, different uh, different ways of looking at things. And those are called mores. I can't think of any other words right now for synonyms. But that's what it is. It's a, it's a judgment system. It's, 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 it's a value system. It's a, it's, a way of, it's a way of life. Those are called mores. And that's what it assimilate means. So it means to get used to the new society in that sense. To adopt the new value system, the new mores, new way of life, new... Uh, new ways of looking at things. Do you understand? I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I cannot think of any other synonym for mores. The next word we want to learn is something actually that we already learned before. And I do not know why I put down again on this list, even though I knew full well that we have learned it already, but I wanted to Put it down, I don't know why. Or oh, because of the next word that we want to learn after this one. The word is E and then eclectic. Eclectic. What does it mean eclectic? It's an adjective. Eclectic means coming from coming from various sources. It means coming from different sources. It means coming from disparate sources. This word is pronounced. As you can see, this per it, this per it sources, which means coming from varied sources, coming from various sources, coming from different sources. Eclectic is the word. For example, for example, if you walk in somebody's uh, living room, if you walk in somebody's house in their living room, and you notice that they got uh, this piece of furniture, maybe a couch or something uh, that looks like a very, a very old English, 18th century English furniture, and then on the other side they got something that looks very Oriental. On the other side, on the third side, they got something that looks like a Native American uh, piece of uh, furniture. Uh, but that's a very eclectic furniture because it's coming from different sources. It's not uniform. It's not all Chinese or all Western or all this or that. They have pieces of furniture from different parts of the world. They have paintings on the walls representing different parts of the world, different cultures. But that's a very eclectic collection coming from different sources. Finally, the last word that we want to learn today, which actually is not actually a word, and again the word was disparate, where, which means the same thing as eclectic. Disparate means where coming from various sources, coming from different sources. Let's put it properly. Because technically it doesn't mean coming from different sources, it just means different. Disparate means varied, dissimilar, different. Finally, distinct, disparate, different, varied, distinct, not uniform. The last one I have here actually is not even a word and it's not even a formal expression. It's a very colloquial expression, uh, but I want to learn it anyway because I use it all the time. And sometimes when I use it, people mishear it. I say one thing and they hear another thing. They he they hear they hear one thing. They hear what they want to hear, not what I what I'm actually saying. 
the, word, the expression here is, is first of all, it's a colloquial, colloquial expression. Colloquial, of course, was a colloquial, of course, was the word in itself that we learned on day number five, which means informal speech, informal speech or informal writing, colloquial. Ma and the expression is muck up. What does it mean to muck up? It means to to bag something, to make a mess of something, to make a mess of something. It means to screw something up, to screw something up, big time. It's one thing to screw something up, but to screw something up in a grand, in a royal manner, well, that's a muck-up. It means to botch, it means to bungle. It means to, it means to make picks breakfast. Something. If someone says that you made a pig's breakfast of it, what they're trying to say is that pig's breakfast, I don't know if you noticed or not ever, it's not very organized, it's not very orderly. Very rarely they bother to use cutlery. It's a bloody mess. And if you make a bloody mess of something, well, you mucked it up. And when I say this, the reason I'm on recovery is because when I say it, a lot of the time when people are not paying attention, they hear, they hear something beginning with letter F. But that's not what I say. To muck something up means to make a big, big mess of something, to make a big disaster of something, to screw something up in a royal grand manner, to botch it really badly. Do you understand? That's all for today. That's all I have for today. Tomorrow, we'll continue. And we'll just keep on going, a few words at a time, and we'll improve our vocabulary. That's the idea. It doesn't matter how many words you learn every day, whether it's three words a day, or five words a day, or 50 words a day, it makes absolutely no difference at all. In the long run, what matters is that you do it consistently, on a regular basis. You have a regiment and you stick to it. Right? On that note, on that sermon, I'll end the video. Right? Amen.